again and welcome to Match Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrick. And welcome to November. We are officially in November. One week from Election Day, so, yes. you know, make your plan. That's what the Democrat mailers. Make your plan to go vote because it's complicated to just drive to your polling location or so, walk to your polling so, location. So that's vote. actually behavioral modification techniques. Like, this is actually very genius what they're doing. I read a little bit about this recently. So the idea is, if if you're telling people to create a plan, you're actually like you're 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 modifying their behavior. So, you're telling them so you can do the backstory right with the QR code. Yep. Do you want me to do that? Yeah. Okay. So a friend of mine brought me mailers. They, if I have friends. They bring me all the mail that they get just because I like to see what mail gets because I don't get a lot of it. I've gotten very little mail since the primary, um, but she gets a lot. And the people who I have friends, you know, Democrats get certain mail and declare people. Everybody gets a different mix of mail. Um, so she got one mailer from the Democratic Party, the state Democratic Party. I think it was state, might have been city, but it was definitely Democratic Party. And it was like, make your plan. Do you know, have a plan to go vote? And it said, do you know where, you know, there were a couple questions like you would be filling it out by hand. And I thought, well, that's weird. And then there was a QR code. And even the girl, woman that I work with was suspicious. She was like, why would I scan that? Like, that just seems weird coming from on a piece of mail. And I said, well, my guess, and I hadn't really thought about it until I was saying it to you before the show, my guess is when you scan that, they now, the Democrats are now tracking that you know that you're going to vote. So those were really the people that they'll chase. That's like a hot lead, right? right? Um, and I was thinking there was probably one QR code for each, each polling location because they know where she lives. So they're gonna, they don't need to like have her look it up. It's where you live. But then as I was saying it to you, I was like, or it's a unique QR code specific to her. So now they actually know it's her that scanned it, which is weird. I mean, people get freaked out when you they know that you can even see yeah. their name and whatnot on the voter list. Imagine... I, 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 That's like creepy stuff. I, I have a funny story. Uh, there's a libertarian magazine. It's been around probably for 60, 70 years called Reason Magazine. Mm -hmm. And I used to be a subscriber. And I will tell you when I unsubscribed was, this was back, it must have been 2007-ish because mm -hmm. it was definitely still in New York City before I moved to New Hampshire in 2008. And uh, they mailed a unique to you reason magazine to every single subscriber that had a aerial photo from google earth of your house on the front yep. page of the magazine and their point was this to alert how, right. you to this is the data that's it's, out it's there completely doable. this is how surveillance works this is all possible right i saw that and freaked out so hard i canceled my subscription and i've talked to the editor over the years and he said yeah that was kind of a two-edged sword right double-edged well, sword people don't realize you know it's not that i mean i obviously state rep candidates aren't going to spend the money to do something like that but um you know i tell people all the time it's a it's not that difficult to for even me to accumulate information oh, about people uh, if i want to i mean so so one of the things no one talks about but is happening is law enforcement for example pretty much doesn't really do any private research anymore right because for that they would need to get a warrant they have to go to court they have to persuade a judge there's probable cause or whatever the right. legal standard is for that particular crime and so they're like yeah you know what's easier we just pay the money and we get it from a third party yeah. who's collecting all this information on you so anyway that's an aside but to this point about the do you have a voting yeah. plan? So it is part of uh, behavioral modification. So basically where they start to- Do they make you think that you don't have a plan or that you need to be concerned about your plan? No, it's actually, so it's actually priming your behavior towards decision-making for the day of the election. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing in the same way that we understand, say, uh, incremental goal setting, mm -hmm. right? So you know, I wanna lose 10 pounds. That probably means I need to do X, Y, and Z. Maybe I need to cut down on my Halloween candy. Maybe I need to do whatever, right? So, so you you figure out the steps, and the more steps you figure out, the more there's a likelihood of success because you have created your path hmm. to success. And so, it is a known psychological 
way to get people to prime people. So we're pretty much based on what happened over the past two years. We are on this path where there is like a merging of behavioral psychology, clinical psychology, uh, propaganda. How do you influence people's yeah. behavior? And it's sort of coming to a head. And so when I read this, uh, I forget where I read about it. But I was like, oh, that's very clever, right? Yeah. So now what you've done is you're like, oh, you've primed the date. Because maybe in your voting plan, you're like, oh, go right on your calendar. It's voting day. Then it's like, oh, go check where your hmm. polling place is. Oh, have you told it? So, so it's basically all these steps. Yeah. So I thought that was very, very interesting. And, you know, so we'll see more of that. And then everyone will get bored by it. But don't worry, you know, in, I don't know, six years time, you'll have Big Brother in your pocket. He'll probably shock you if you don't go vote. So, you know, we're just moving towards this terrible totalitarian timeline. I do see literally Democrats calling for mandatory voting. You know, in yeah. Australia, it's illegal not to vote. And well, I'm like... And, and the other one that I hear a lot here, and I don't agree, is that it should be a, it should be a holiday. And I think the reason I don't agree is small businesses and private businesses can't always afford to, one, to pay... If they make it a holiday, is that something that, you know, they're going to pay their employees for or the employees just not going to get paid for that day? Um, Question. So, why can't it be on a Saturday? Well, but why can't? I mean, it's really not that hard to vote. But <laughs> um, but you, the people who would be definitely out of work would be public sector. R right. So yeah. all the city employees and all the state employees and all the teachers and all the police and fire, you know, like all these people wouldn't be working, which would skew the the available voters, I would say. So I, I, I'm over the mindset. I've been voting like every year for, you know, what, 40 years, 30 <laughs> years. I don't know, whatever that. Yeah, like 30, 40 years. And I, other than maybe when I was, you know, in my early, early 20s, I probably didn't vote in local elections. But I mean, I know I voted. I lived in California for a year and I know I voted out there. And I, rem you know, like I remember voting in different places that I'm like, well, I voted then, and I it's voted so, then. It's so, you know, it's so interesting to me that people are so obsessed with things that happen on the federal level. Mm. Uh, now, of course, that's where all the money gets pushed yep. in. So, so, and and you know, okay, I I guess I get it. But really, the impact on anyone who's watching this show or any one of us is really on the local level. You should be able to well, name like all your local people and not give two flying well, fig leaves about but the people. At, in this, DC. this year in particular, the reason people are focused, I mean, they always focus on the, the, the national elections, but um, the federal elections, I should say. Um, this year, the reason that so many people are talking about the federal elections, not that I think that can be necessarily fixed, is because what DC has screwed up so much, so much in the past couple years that you know they print the money, they print the money, print the money, and now we have the inflation and the more inflation and more inflation, <laughs> and now and, they're planning to print more money. Right. So we've got you know, <laughs> I mean, this is the crux of what I think is going to happen a week from now. You've got. You always have two different sides. You know, you got the Republicans and the Democrats. There, there's libertarian candidates in there, but the reality is, is we live in a two-party system in New Hampshire, and we have this view, and we have this view. But what I'm seeing, and I was thinking about this when I was reading about the truck driver that got shot outside the mall in New Hampshire the other day, and why are people so irate? You know, like, driving should not be that hostile, right? Like, come on, people. But road rage has always existed. Right, no, no, I'm just saying, made me stop and think, and I keep seeing um, things in my Facebook feed or whatever from the Democrats who keep calling Republicans extreme. They're extremists, oh my God, they're extremists. Stop the rhetoric, they're extremists. And I think, thought about it, and I'm like, okay, but what you're doing is actually what's ramping up people to the point that they're they're acting irrationally and they're angry and they're violent and they're this. It's not, what are the Republicans talking about? We really Inflation, need- Inflation, right, the economy, right. maybe making sure kids read and right. write. That's what I mean, just I talking don't know, about- Uber extreme. About actual things, about 
how we can reduce, you know, what we can do in New Hampshire to try to reduce the cost of electric and natural gas. What we can do to keep lower Second taxes. Second nuclear, folks, it's you gonna know, happen. All, all these things, and that's what I'm seeing. And I try to be objective, but I'm like, no, every ma piece of mail I see says, you know, we have to do something about the crazy inflation. We have to do something about the price of gas. We have to do something about our failing schools. We have to, like, we have to do something. I mean, at least it's solution-based. It's exactly. not actually just attacking random but, but, people. Uh, all I see on the Democrat, because, again, like I said, my friends bringing in all these mailers has become our first thing in the morning thing at work. We look at who's getting... Bashed. Right, right. And you know, they've the Democrats are still using, which I think we weaned out. Ooh, scary black and white face. Ooh, scary black and white face. Ooh, happy smiley color face. Okay, because I don't really think voters are that naive. You have if you don't. But uh, the, the, I mean, they the mail doesn't say anything. All it says is stop the extremists. And I even commented the other day. Somebody right away goes to abortion, right? And I said, I'm sorry. Saying that you can only have an abortion the first six months of pregnancy is hardly radical or extreme. Or a ban. Which it's is not a ban. And they say, they but tell. they're banning. It was about Ted Gatsis. That's what cracked me up. They were talking about Ted Gatsis and the executive council and how Ted Gatsis was going to ban abortions. And I said, well, perhaps you all need a civics lesson because the executive council does not write law. The executive council has nothing to do with banning anything because that is left to the legislature. So the only thing the executive council can do is whether to vote to take your tax dollars and give it to somebody like Planned Parenthood. Even if we don't give your tax dollars to Planned Parenthood does not mean you'd lost your access to women's reproductive health care. So, I totally random, but everyone will appreciate this for what it is. It's a very funny joke that no one gets, but I was <laughs> watching um, The Real Anthony Fauci Part 1 came oh, out. Geez. Highly recommend. I would What's that on? So uh, Google it because it's on different platforms. Okay. Uh, it's on YouTube and then it gets taken down and all these things. But it's really interesting. It is based on uh, Kennedy's book, which was, you know, like this thick with so many footnotes, like even a nerd like me who's a lawyer who reads the footnotes was like, damn, this is over-researched. So the movie doesn't cover, obviously, everything that's in the book because they're trying to make a story. But part one just came out. Here's what I learned in part one that stuck in my little noggin was, ooh, Bill Gates' father served on the board of Plan Planet Parenthood. Bill Gates, let me repeat that, Bill Gates Sr., his father, Bill Gates, the crazy guy who some people posit might be, I don't know, someone who's really into reducing the population mm. of the world. I mean, he's on record saying it, so I'm not just making stuff up. His dad served on the board of Planned Parenthood. Hmm. So I'm like, hmm, I don't know if we should trust second generation eugenicists. <laughs> ha ha. Um, um, yeah, I thought that was super yeah, that's creepy. Odd. When you, you know, people be I mean, like, what is that mean? It's just all the stuff that, like, what the average person I mean, person Margaret know. Sanger, who started Planned Parenthood, and is on the record as someone who said she's a eugenicist. She thinks, uh, I believe the word at the time was Negroes, yep. w should not uh, have children and that they would like to keep the population lower. So be careful when you get caught up in these issues who who you're supporting and what the real narrative is because when you do your homework you start to realize maybe it's not such a big woman's lib issue maybe it's a a bunch of evil people trying to manipulate you to kill your offspring yep. kind of narrative um be that as it one may. of the one of the um things and i it's hard to work into like mail. I I could have done a whole <laughs> mailer on this, but it seemed a little over the top, and it didn't seem like a good use of the money that people donate to my campaign. Not a bad use, but you have to make decisions, right? Do I doing this, doing that? So I was talking. To, I do, tell people this, and because they're perplexed why people continue to vote for Democrats, and I'm not talking to just Republicans, so that's where it's funny, right? So they're like, I don't get it. You, the Republicans just seem to be the ones using common sense and practical, you know, like practical solutions. And I say, I don't know what makes people vote for other people. So in my district, um, Heidi Hamer is our current state rep, and she's running again. And I always tell the story. I say, so there was a bill in the last couple of years to literally 
remove the re- the requirement for a kid to get a permit for a lemonade stand. Like literally, the law. This is one of those absurd laws. The law said kids couldn't have lemonade stands without filing for a permit. And they, I said, now what? I can't even imagine the argument being made to why you would object to that. Like, I can't even imagine, right? Like to me, so you don't think a nine-year-old should be able to put up a lemonade stand stand without paying money to the government. That's a hard, that's really hard for me. No, Heidi Hamer didn't. Hi, Hamer voted oh, again, yeah, but, but, letting kids have uh, lemonade stands. But, and I say, but I so, say, so did my opponent. It as seems well. so like it sounds so silly, but it really brings you down to the the crux of who they are. Well, they well, actually so, believe the government should control lemonade stands for children. They believe the government should control everything. everything. Like we are, and, and I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying the model that we are trending towards is a kind of CCP model, yeah. which will be an app. This is what they were trying to do with the vaccine passports. They're trying to condition us with that behavioral modification that I was just talking about to be like, oh, these things become normal, that it is somehow normal that you would uh, have to show some some, por- some your papers. QR code right. in order to eat at a restaurant, right. which, you know, I know the folks who write for The Atlantic are now very eager to be like, you know, we should just really forget about the past two years because who knows for whatever reason why some people were wrong. You know, I'm a forgiving, loving person. <laughs> I actually do think that we do need some kind of tribunal and someone needs to be held accountable the leaders that push this where we should not have strife and infighting is amongst neighbors the best we can do is to forgive each other within our milieu but fauci in my opinion should hang yeah i mean i i i I mean that literally like nuremberg trials they hung the scientists and they hung the people who experimented on humans and murdered swaths and millions of I, people. I at le- Someone has to have I would at least like to see Congress and I'm against the death penalty. Congress <laughs> spending um the amount of money and effort that they've spent investigating January sixth for the last two plus years now the January 6th insurrection. Um, But the amount of time and money they've spent investigating that, I think at least that much time and money should be put into what, I mean, who did what, what, how did this go out? Who's responsible? How do we never let this happen again? Um, It's not how do we never let this happen again. They are literally, all the labs are now doing more gain of function research to try and make it more deathly to humans. Now, I don't know about you guys back home. I don't know about you, but I'm like, I don't know when we went from science to mad scientism. And then we're just kind of going, oh, that's okay. And why do I say Fauci should hang? I mean, I mean it. I actually do genuinely mean it. Um, and, And again, like I'm against the death penalty in general, because I think the state gets everything wrong. And so they actually hang a lot of not guilt. Uh, metaphorically, right, death penalty hang uh, the wrong people because we know a lot of people who are in jail are actually innocent and just somehow got railroaded. Where we're not functioning as a healthy or normal or balanced society is when we go, but these people are actually guilty. We all saw it with our own eyes. We saw the people go on television, lie to you, destroy your children's lives, destroy their educations. Now it's turning out that these masks actually like give you cancer because you're basically breathing in all kinds of weird chemicals. Those questions were asked at the start, those people were silenced as well. And so the point is, in order for a healthy society to regroup from this, the guys who did it don't get to la 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 la. Well, away. And, and and get same with pensions that they'll live forever. You know, they'll live happily ever after with their. Oh my God, Fauci! His his net worth went up by thirty million yeah. last year. Why? Because he gets royalties on the vaccines, folks. And you're going to say, I sound crazy, but it's true. Here's the thing is they're just, they're the scum of the earth and someone is going to have to be held 
accountable in order for society to heal and to say, let's not do this again. Because if we don't do that, Tammy, what's going to happen is then they are going to put the QR code. And then next time it's going to be like, I mean, they literally just added the COVID vaccine to the childhood vaccination schedule, which means that if you live in a state like New Hampshire, which we do, that says anything that's on the FDA childhood vaccination schedule is also de facto part of our plans. And so if you don't want your kid to get it, now you have to go through all the opt-out steps, et cetera. So shifting gears to the election. Okay. All right. Did everyone get their mailer back home? Uh, These came in the mail. I don't know if yours was the same color. It was probably the same sort of format. But if you got this nice little yellow one, it's a handy and it's got a little ballot at the back. It'll also tell you uh, sometimes you're supposed to only vote for one. Sometimes you're supposed to vote for two. So I found it really handy. Certainly in my race, probably in yours as well. You should vote for both me and Brittany Ping. Uh, You're voting at Gosler School. That's 140. Oh, thank you very much. Look at that. in there. Ha ha. Fancy, fancy. Fancy. Um, You're voting at Gosler School. I think it's time to give uh, Britt and I the chance to show you guys what we can do. You have had whoever the other people are in there for a long time. They're literally people voting for banning. All sorts. Just uh, lemonade stands. Yeah. And yeah. if you're curious about Patricia's voting record, you can go to CarlaGarrick.com. I have our entire voting record for the past several years on there. Your jaw will drop. She hates school choice. Uh, she, <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's really actually bad. And in some ways I feel sorry for some of the Democrats because there is no leeway to vote your conscience. No, they're you pretty, to they're be pretty strong-armed. Dead. Yeah, and so you see this lockstep. So also, when you hear things like Maggie Hassan claiming to be bipartisan or any of these people to be like, we are, you know, we work across the aisle. Go look at the voting records because they're voting 97 to 100% of the time with their party. The party that actually thinks you should be able to abort a baby up until and after birth. So did you see the mailer? I wish I had brought it now. There was a mailer that went out. It was against Don Bolduck because Don Bolduck was at an event. And I'm going to get the words wrong. But he was at an event and they asked him about abortion, you know, the abortion questions. And he said he believed that it did belong um, at the state level. And he reference to the state reps that happened to be in attendance at this meet at this com- town hall they happened to all be male i'm sure if if it had been all women he would have used different language but he said that should be left to these fine gentlemen to decide meaning the legislature <laughs> right. should make these decisions the state legislature the dems took that completely out of context dan was like look at the quotes there's like open quotes and then some words and then close quotes, then a bunch of other words that he never said. And then a, another open quote at the end of what he words he said, but then it doesn't even close the quote. So they literally like just said, well, we'll take this word and this word and this word and put a bunch of words in between and say that he said this. And then below it, they had pictures of like, I don't know, a dozen male Republican state reps some of which weren't even running for office this year. And they voted, oh, they voted, oh, this is scary. And I was like, is this really the way that, this is what you're talking to voters? You're telling, you're basically just making up words and attaching them to a candidate. You know, I when I was a state rep, I own my voting record. That's the one thing you do. You, you're, you, can, you only go up there with, you know, your integrity and your voting record is what you walk out with. So every time you make a vote, even if you made a mistake, you, you got to own what you voted on. I mean, I can re- recall certain bills that I was like, I don't know if I voted the right way because afterward, you know, you realize like, oh, there was that one paragraph. I wish I hadn't voted for that. So, <laughs> but I mean, you got to own it. If you want to say, I voted for this. Perfect. Also, that Perfect opens- example. The, the video on YouTube of the Democrats literally saying they didn't vote on an income tax. They voted on a tax for a specific purpose that comes out of your paycheck. Those are literally their words. 
because it's an income tax. You can say it. it's not an abortion ban. It's just a restriction on the time in which you can kill the unborn child. It's not an, I mean, come on. You can't mince words. You can't twist words. The reality is, is okay, all these yeah, Democrats. That is the art of politics, They voted for an income tax and they would want it to be called something else because they know that people in New Hampshire do not want an income tax. Oh, no, uh, yes, that that so is So stop true. lying. Re also, read just, the words. Because we're going to run out yeah. of time. In today's union minutes. leader, I was, um, I, there, there's a great little op-ed uh, by a gentleman Stephen called, Smith. Uh, Stephen He's the Smith. deputy majority leader. So, uh, you know, he talks about a lot of different things, just saying, you know, that the Democratic Party is doing a disservice. They're lying to you. Do your data yeah. and everything. But then one of the notes that we have seen that has come out a lot <laughs> is, wow, <laughs> not used to the props, sorry, <laughs> is, um, is this notion of, oh, if you move to New Hampshire, say like I did, right, as a free stater. I did 30 years ago. Um, that you, that somehow makes you disqualified suddenly, right? But 58% of current Democrats, and I believe 70% of the actual entire legislature, is uh, foreign born, they're immigrants or refugees to the <laughs> great state of New Hampshire right. from somewhere else because we like the quality of living, because we like the low taxes, because we like the trust that the government puts in all of us to lead and succeed in our own lives and to not, you know, I don't know, ban lemonade stands. And so I thought this was a really good message to put out there. You can't say just because you actually chose New Hampshire as your home, i.e. you mindfully made and set an intention to come do something for the greater good to steal all the Dems' little nasty language, then don't hold that against people. Go look at what they're doing with their lives. Right. Go look. Are they right. trying to tell you the truth? Are they trying to be like fair in how they present stuff? Or are they lying to you and manipulating you and actually harming you? Because you know what, guys, we did get harmed over the past yep. two years. This was not like a successful run for the government, and we have to hold them to account. So please vote for me next <laughs> Tuesday. Yep. And if you want, um, if you live in Ward Ten, because um, Carla and Brittany are running in Ward Eleven. If you live in Ward Ten and you want more information about Dan and I, uh, you can go to TammySimmons.org. Um, we got some information there. You can reach out to me anytime via phone, 603-235-9998. Um, I hope everybody gets out and vote. Um, you know, we have a, it's, it's a gem of a thing we have in this country where we actually put the, the votes to the people. And it's up to you to get out there and vote. If you don't vote, then you're outvoted. That's as simple as that. Um, we will not be taping next week. No. Um, we'll be back the week after. Um, and you'll see our smiling faces once again. Meanwhile, enjoy the weather. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.